want Eagles football? We're talking Eagles football. You're listening to Fourth and John. Wait, what the f is a John anyway? What's up, Philadelphia? We are live broadcasting from the beautiful new media studios right outside of Philadelphia. Welcome to Fourth and John, episode 18. Boys and girls, I hope Santa was good to you because as a fan base, he was good to us. It feels so good to come back in here after a holiday break after an Eagles W because man it feels like forever since we've been able to come in here and talk about an Eagles victory Santa was good to us a little bit of an early gift hope your Christmas was all right hope you were with your family with your kids your belly your heart's full your wallet's empty just like it is mine it's the holiday season it's over we're talking about a W more importantly I've said on previous podcasts that there's nothing more dangerous than the New York football giants going into the playoffs, getting hot at the right time. They did it in 2007. They did it in 2011. But each time they've gotten hot and going into the playoffs to eventually beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl, they've won at the very least three out of their last four, specifically their last two games to fire it up, get hot, go into the postseason. Well, boys and girls, Eagles fans, we just dumped a bucket of cold-ass water on those New York football giants as they were getting ready for that postseason. Now, granted, they made it. Good for them. Good for you. But Odell Beckham's in the tunnel, pouting, crying, making noises. Eli Manning's looking anything but an elite quarterback. Got a lot of Eli face. A lot of Eli face on Thursday night. More importantly... The Eagles come out with a much-needed W. Now, as I look across the table at my man Gail Saunders, looking like Rick Ross Santa right now. That beard's getting long, brother. That beard's getting long. How, how, how? How, how, What did you think about that Eagles win against the Giants? I think it was much-needed because last week you guys saw me. I was pretty much dead inside. Five and a half weeks of L's. That'll do it to you. Yeah. Uh, We got the return of Lane Johnson, which was, uh, you know, great. But a little bit too late. But, um, you know, it, it's exciting just, just to get a W in the city. I mean, the, the, the stadium was rocking. You guys looked like you were having a great time. Well, we Rubbing it in the faces <laughs> of Cop Hizzle. Oh, yeah. little yes. Jezebel singing. That was a gift. That, that, that gift from you was pretty amazing. Yeah, that, you know, that, that was worth the price of admission. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, if you haven't checked it out, the video is up on my Twitter account, at the Mighty E-Rock. Cop so Hizzle, funny. the number one Giants fan, probably yep. on YouTube. You can argue, you can argue like he's like the E Rock of, of of Giants. Nobody YouTube. compares to you though. Well, well, I thank you. Let's Sid. just be honest. Uh, but thank you. You're you're flattering me. My face is going to turn as red as his hat right now. <laughs> Thanks for the hats, by the way, Ziz. Ziz you're over welcome. there looking uh, looking like a naughty little elf. How are you doing today? Uh, it's I'm, been a I'm while. I'm a saint. I'm a saint. I'm good. I'm good. I've missed you guys. I missed everybody at Fourth and John. We missed you too, girl. I'm, a, I, you know, this, I, I can't lie. You know me, I'm so hype about everything. But these five weeks of agony and my feet are dying, okay? I, I'm excited, but I'm not excited. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're, we're done. It's, it's, a bitter, it's a bittersweet end. Yeah. I mean, I really, like, you heard me from the jump. Like, I'm so pumped about Ginger Jesus. And I really thought God gave, it to, gave him to us and something exciting and that nobody thought was going to happen was going to happen. And now I'm just like, oh. But at least we got the win because if not, I would have just not watched anything. I mean, literally, at the end of the game, what were you guys? I mean, my heart was palpitating as usual. Mm. I'm pacing, cursing at everybody. <laughs> if you guys don't win it, like, I, I, I walk, I walked out of there feeling like I'm, I'm a little guy. I'm Darren Sproul size. I walked out of there feeling t- seven foot tall. I, I, I might I, make another baby tonight, just in the name of Carson. And it, and it almost happened, Justin. It almost hey. happened. I mean, it, it, it felt great. And I know, Gail, last, uh, last episode you said that, you know, it might dra- mess up the draft pick, although the Browns have our pick in the first round. Right. And then, uh, but, but in the second round, it might drop us back. 
I, I feel like this is like a momentum builder <laughs> going into the postseason. We're not building towards anything, but if you can make the Giants, who clinched the playoff spot this weekend with a New Orleans Saints win, if you can make them look mortal, if you can look like you hang with the guys, now I don't know if that sort of feeling is going to be the same about the Dallas Cowboys coming up last game of the season. Because they're going to be resting a lot of their starters, or at least some of them. Right, the, the yeah, Tyron mm-hmm. Smith has a sprained MCL. I mm-hmm. heard that. Fuck the Cowboys. Yes, fuck exactly. the Cowboys. Uh, Dak Prescott will be sitting. I heard, and I heard Romo might not be going, and maybe Sanchez. Sanchez. Time. Sanchez. Yeah, Senior yeah, yeah. Sanchez. Sanchez. I, I I checked the Twitter right right before we went on air, and the CBS had a report out that uh, it was looking more and more by the minute, like it, Tony Romo was not going to see any playing time whatsoever in that game and that Mark Sanchez was going to be active and play if not start in the place of Dak Prescott now for the life of me with all the 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 tugging underneath the table that Jerry Jones and Tony Romo have had over the last several months for for the life of me I can't understand why they wouldn't put Tony Romo in there because it would be such a fitting end such a fitting end to see Tony Romo end his Cowboys career like so many other games at Lincoln Financial Field, on his back. But actually, my man Justin, as we were talking about it, my man Justin inside the booth had a great theory on why we will not see Tony Romo against the Eagles coming up this Sunday. Yeah, so there's no real benefit to playing him. It's a game that doesn't matter. And right now, Tony Romo is the best backup in the league, and it's not close. So God forbid something happens to Dak in the playoffs, why would you play Romo in a pointless game when Tyron Smith is hurt and you're going to probably bench at least one more of your offensive linemen, if not another one? Just run out Mark Sanchez, who won't even be here next year. Let the Eagles, who are probably going to put the division anger and the fact that this is the last game of the season into everything they play with, just go let Sanchez get killed and not Tony Romo. You know what? That, that entire statement disgusts me. It disgusts me. And not because, Justin, not because you're not right, because you are right. It disgusts me because it actually makes sense. Like, that's what pisses me off about the Cowboys this year. A lot of the shit they've done is actually, like, football smart. You know what I mean? Whether it be the way they built that offensive line, whether it be keeping Sean Lee healthy, feeding Des what he has to feed, the play calling, the defensive play calling. The draft picks. The the draft picks. I mean, it it is just... It is just fucking obnoxious and if if they get Jalen Smith back at full health at linebacker he's, he's gonna be a beast for the next uh decade I, I just I can't like it hurts my heart <laughs> but heart hurts. we don't want to talk about Cowboys forever do we no no we don't we don't like the Cowboys in fact show. as we're as we're talking about it just to, just to kind of get it away from the Eagles a little bit right. like I'm, I'm looking at the National Football League uh, National Football Conference standing, the NFC standings, all right? Dallas is number one. They have clinched division and home field advantage. Atlanta Falcons have clinched their division. Seattle Seahawks clinching their division. There's a little bit of a maybe what can happen here. Green Bay's in the fourth spot. New York and the Detroit Lions. Washington's out of it. So that's – this. other than a, a couple seedings here and there, that's your playoff picture. You're looking at Dallas, Atlanta, Seattle, Green Bay, New York, and Detroit. So, Gail, let me ask you, as we just kind of start this up right away, Dallas and the Atlanta look like they're going to get those buys, right? What team in the NFC looks like they're a fit to kind of go head-to-head against the Dallas Cowboys? And hopefully, if Jesus is listening, hopefully Dallas Cowboys don't make it to a Super Bowl. I'm hoping it's Seattle. I love Seattle. I hope they're not. Hopefully, they're not sleepless in Seattle. I, hope, I mean, they, they have the kind of pass rush that could affect Dak Prescott. I mean, you think about Dak against some teams. They don't. If you don't have a pass rush and Dak uh, Prescott's back there all day, Go he's just gonna up. he's just gonna pick you apart. So I mean, you gotta you, only team that has a, a really decent pass rush could really affect their chances of making it. Well, if the playoffs started today, right? Dallas and, the, and Atlanta get the bye. It would be Seattle versus Detroit. And then New York hosting the uh, uh, Green Bay hosting the New York Giants. Yeah. So Dallas is going to get the lowest seed no matter what. So let's say uh, I, I can't see the Detroit Lions beating the Seattle Seahawks. So the Seattle is the number three seed. Chances are they're going to get like uh, like New York. 
But you got to remember, they already beat them twice. Yeah, New York has their and number, and they have a pass rush. So that exactly, exact the Mundo brother. So hopefully, I mean, as the Dallas Cowboys make these smart moves and make, and continue to be at the top of the NFC and get a first round bye, which. We so vividly remember how clutch it was during the McNabb Reed years, where we were a perennial playoff team. Yep. And it was it wasn't about if we were going to win the division, it wasn't about if we were going to go to the playoffs. It was about were we going to get that first round bye or not. And it's so beneficial to have it. Now they're a young team with a lot of inexperience as far as the postseason goes, so that accounts for something as well. Now getting back to the Eagles, not a whole lot of news Eagles wise. Except for one guy, a former Eagle. This own it. You know, oh. kind of, kind of getting into the mix there. Kind of in the media's media's attention, right? Deshaun Jackson as Justin holds up his number <laughs> He's ten. He's been wearing that all vintage, <laughs> kind of grungy, crusty <laughs> Wilson, <laughs> falling apart, Wilson yeah. jersey. New one. front party jersey Santa. over there. The the Deshaun <laughs> Jackson he, as he nods yeah, his head. Yeah, right, there's good. been a lot of beer spilt on that jersey. I can and, tell and you he, that much. He's not doing it like a lot of people go. Oh, he's just doing it for attention. He doesn't need any more attention. He really wants to come back. You got to think about what, how how he got booted out of here. You know he misses Philly. Oh, he loved But that's the weird thing. Like, the way it ended was so brutal, bad. Not only was it it's unexpected, rough, rough but it was like they o- – now, I'll never know. And, and, and I don't think, you know, um, the guy's ever really going to come out and say whether he got information from the Eagles themselves, all right, about reports of, of him being affiliated with uh, Elliot Shore Parks, yeah. whether he was affiliated he's with anybody. That. He's, he's never going to say that out loud, whether or not he got that in. But it was almost like a complete defacing, almost kind of a, a public drag through the mud here in Philadelphia of Deshaun's character that does he miss, or would he really miss Philadelphia, or does he just hold that grudge against Chip Kelly? It's it's against Chip Kelly because, uh, again, let's let's – from you know a fan perspective, we're all looking on the outside. What did we hear the whole time? It wasn't just him. The players did not like Chip by the end of it. They did not like him. They didn't respect him. They they gave, they stopped playing last season. Last season they stopped playing for their coach. They don't respect him. Deshaun, Deshaun, he wouldn't come back if he knew a pie. Everything nobody hate. They hate me. Blah blah blah. He you wouldn't want any parts with Philadelphia. But Deshaun knows. You know he knows. He he knows that. It was Chip Kelly. He wants to come back. Chip was the common denominator that caused the problems of uh, McCoy would come back. If hey, he he's could. got property here. Yeah, that, that, that is very easy. He loves easy. Philadelphia. But still, like, 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 okay, okay, if that information leaked, and don't forget that Jason Kelsey tweeted right after it happened that, listen, we made an unpopular decision today, but we're going to move forward and, 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 you know, Build this thing the right way. Whatever the fuck he said, yeah, it, was, it, it was it was that was what, yeah, up. company man speak. It's company man speak. Yeah, and Jason Kelsey admitted on ninety four <laughs> one too a little later, like during the players' lounge or something. That he's raining it back on for as far as what he says in public, as yeah. far as support, because you never know. I mean, even Doug Peterson at the end of end of a couple years could be out of here. But Deshaun Jackson is one of the free agents to be in kind of a weak free agent class. You're gonna have Alshon Jeffrey. You, you, you're going to have your boy from Cleveland. Who, my Pryor. Pryor. I, I thought you were all on the Pryor train. No, nah, I, I, was, oh. I, was, I wasn't pushing the Pryor train. That would probably be Oresco. Tom Oresco. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's his boy. Uh, That's his boy. Kane? I, I, I apologize. But I, I believe, you know, he, he's had a great season. Yeah. For playing in Cleveland. Rather but than the, what we have right now. But the free agent. But I, yeah, I, don't, I don't feel like spending too much bank on Pryor, though. No. Well, did you guys hear about today? Uh, I forget who said. I forget where I saw it. I'd I take him though. Yeah, well, I take him too. Connor Barwin, did you hear? If we, if Eagles, w- if we drop him, we'll save a cap space by seven point seven five million dollars. Yeah, he's so out. would yeah. you guys? He's gone. Yeah. Well, we so w- a lot of people were fighting about today. Would you do it or not? Yeah. I would. It's I time. love him though. Yeah, I mean, th- th- there is a uh, there is a list of Eagles that will not be back next year. One of which just went on an injury reserve today, and that's Ryan Matthews. Matthews. Ryan Matthews is not coming back. Connor Barwin not coming back. We could have McCoy back. Matthews might not even play next. I mean, his career might be over with that injury, that neck in- injury that he. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that's a, that that's a tough one. When you're, mark, when, you're, yeah. when, you're, when you're banging into the uh, the offensive line in and, and, and stuff like that, I mean, that that's a serious 
it was serious enough with like it's a Peyton Manning esque injury. At least that's the way that it was explained to me. You, Peyton Manning's got to worry about getting hit in the pocket. As far as Ryan Matthews is concerned, you're getting hit everywhere. That's, that's single play. And that's his running style too. Like yeah, that's his and game. he's a physical runner. So plus, uh, uh, along with so many other ailments, right? Like he can't stay on the like field. That. He, he just well, that's, I mean, that's been his thing. Ryan. His middle name is if healthy. If healthy Ryan, Matthews. if healthy Matthews. Yeah, absolutely. AKA Bubble Boy. 